and we had seen uh, exponential random variable and we had seen uh, normal random variable so three x was uniformly distributed uh, we denote it by uh, u and i f unique that means uniformly distributed over the closed interval a b okay so simply we are writing terminal points here we are not not writing uh, complete in, uh, interval because here you can see that it is a bracket and close interval is dealing with a square bracket so that's why you read it these are just terminal point so x is uniformly distributed it is a uniform random variable uniformly distributed so easily we can write the corresponding probability density function of the uniformly distributed random variable over uh, the domain uh, ab close interval ab so it is having an uniform distribution that means uniform height same height uniform distribution same same height of distribution that how points are distributed so with equally likely distribution the, the equally likely distribution how we define it uh, in case of continuous random variable we do, we do break that uh, interval into sub intervals and uh, any two sub interval of equal length is behaving like equally likely kind of things any two sub interval of equal length behave in a uniform manner you could, that uniform height and uniform probability same probability so all those meaning of uniform or law or equally likely law so under that we had computed probability density function it is oh, 1 by b minus a when x is observing value uh, from the closed interval uh, ab and when a is observing value outside this one then there is no density there is no point so okay so density would be zero so outside the interval density is probability density function is zero then we had seen uh, exponential random variable that would be also continuous uh, exponential is generally it is uh, very much related with uh, uh, that uh, exponential decay kind of things if you take a bulb what is the lifetime of a bulb this electric bulb if you are talk talking about electric bulb whether that electric bulb uh, li if you talk about lifetime of electric bulb whether it will survive for uh, very long time that bulb if you talk about electric bulb that never survive uh, but the use of bulb it decay and that lifetime decay and finally it will decay down to zero that we call it fuse state of the bulb bulb get fused and no use of bulb so that kind of lifetime also radioactive decay you might have already heard so those are having exponential uh, distribution probability distribution uh, density function so we, in short we write it exp and there would be a parameter of decay in every decay kind of thing there is a parameter that we represent it by lambda and uh, the density is coming uh, in the form of exponential function f of x is so when you talk about time generally x exponential random variable represent uh, decay time so time is never we are taking negative sense time always it start with zero and it will propagate so that's where the density would have uh, non zero value when x is taking value greater than equal to zero so and the density is lambda time e to the power minus uh, lambda time x sorry lambda time x when x is behaving like time time is always greater than or equal to zero generally if you are going to study mathematically we take like this way otherwise those will call if you talk about negative time those are part of history we are not interested in that side. and uh, the density is zero for exponential random variable when x is less than zero. So this uh, random variable, exponential random variable, observe value or random numbers in the interval, uh, close interval zero 
open to infinity okay that kind of thing and third we had seen normal random variable actually under the central limit theorem whatever uh, random number you are taking those may have different different kind of uh, distribution but in totality if you talk that will always have approximately normal distribution so that one is central limit theorem you, in in higher semester if you get time you will study that because we are having time limitation so i am not going to cover that uh, if time permit then i may go otherwise i want to go so it is normally distributed we de denote it by uh, not simple notation and n for normal uh, mean is it is having actually two parameter mean and variance directly or explicitly coming as a parameter variance happens to be sigma square as square root of variance we call it a standard deviation so sigma is a standard deviation and a sigma square is the variance okay so this one is a, a normal random variable and what is the probability density function of this it is uh, taking the form of exponential function f of x and it is very much symmetric it is taking uh, single form of uh, notation it is not like that bifurcated form this one is having two component this one is having two component and this one but not like in normal distribution you will get a single component there is a normalizing constant that one by uh, root uh, two pi two pi a square root of two pi it is a normalizing constant you will come to know it is coming with respect to Euler integral you will come to see later time sigma that means a square root of the variance okay and here all the function would be e to the power minus of 1 by 2 into I am writing in a, a square term all every all those are coming within a square together x minus mu divided by sigma whole square in the last lecture I had written it like that x minus mu whole square divided by twice of sigma square it is same thing yeah, we are writing it like this way so this no, uh, notation is much important later we will see with respect to uh, what we call it transformation linear transformation we will see that uh, there would be very a specific kind of normal distribution where mean would be 0 and variance would be 1 unit variance 1 and mean 0 and that kind of normal random variable we call it a standard normal random variable and you will see a normal table there the CDF cumulative distribution function of value of cumulative distribution function of normal table would be given there in the normal table it would be given there and from that normal table you can compute uh, probability density or probability you can compute probability related to normal random variable from that normal table like uh, in high school you might have uh, seen uh, uh, logarithmic table have you seen logarithmic table have you seen or not not so definitely logarithmic yeah there, there definitely there might be no logarithmic table so similar to that in probability if you are up willing to compute probability of uh, uh, an event and you don't know what is the distribution of the re related distribution then you will try to approximate that probability with the with the help of normal distribution and the corresponding probability needs uh, probability distribution or cumulative distribution of the uh, random variable normal random variable that you will get it from the normal table so just in hand you will have normal table from there you can estimate or compute the probability in the question so similar to logarithmic table that it is all about application of that so in question if uh, the specific value of uh, that uh, uh, CDF of no, uh, a standard normal random variable either it will be given in the question and, and if it is not given you may demand for normal table so that you will see the value in the normal table and you will be able to compute the probability that kind of thing will come here and the uh, a specific uh, normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 we denote it by z z is a special notation for a specially uh, 
a standard normal random variable. We call it a standard normal random variable when mean is 0 and variance is 1. And we in short we denote it by it is distributed as n 0 1. n is for normal. So, this kind of and CDF of this would be given in the normal table. Okay, even more than that, that due to symmetric nature CDF of only positive value of z would be given there. And from there you can compute uh, CDF for negative value of z as well. So, you can easily compute those things due to symmetric nature of uh, uh, PDF of z. Okay, so uh, those were uh, recap of that. Now we are talking and further uh, uh, continuation. Now next we will talk about derived distribution of a continuous random variable. We had already seen that uh, derived distribution of a discrete random variable. If you are willing to enlarge the class of uh, random variable or class of continuous distribution or class of discrete distribution, we had already seen the enlarging of class of uh, discrete distribution. Now we will enlarge class of uh, what we call it. Uh, continuous distribution that means distribution related with uh, continuous random variable or uh, corresponding probability density function. So, you had uh, you need here a continuous random variable x as a map from uh, omega to omega x and omega is x is not a sequence of random number it is a continuum set. So, that uh, notation in computational framework we are writing it like this way omega x is not equal to uh, a countable set, but what does it mean? It is a, a continuum set simply just for computational purpose we are writing it like this way, but mathematically if you are uh, trying to define it in a statement, uh, statement way then you can call it continuum set that means it contains intervals, it contains interval. Then second what we do? We are taking function of x a function of x that we call it g of x ok f is booked for probability density function that is why we are not taking and g of x we are calling it function of x now and you can call this one is a uh, derived uh, derived random variable or function of random variable. But remember that in the last case if you are taking a discrete random variable then corresponding y uh, would be a discrete as well, discrete random variable. But here if you are taking a continuous random variable then y may be a discrete uh, random variable or may be a continuous random variable. Both possibilities are there here. It, it is not like that if x is a continuous random variable always you will see that y is a continuous random variable. You will see both kind of things. It may be discrete, it may be continuous, depends upon distribution of y, what kind of distribution y is having, what kind of value y is observing. Like uh, one example we have seen that if you are taking omega a continuous uh, interval, close interval 0, 1 and you there you define uh, that sign of the number which falls uh, in the interval uh, 0 and 1. So, there are two signs either it will be 0 or 1, positive. So, that kind of binary classification. If you take uh, minus 1 to 1 interval, then three possibilities of sign minus, minus 0 and plus signum function that we call it. So, the, the, there if you say y is equal to sign of x, then the, what would happen? Y is a discrete random variable, but uh, x is observing value from continuous things, continuous interval. So, that is way we can say that the here this y it may have two nature, it may be a discrete random variable, if it is a discrete random variable then we will define probability mass function and if it is a continuous random variable then we will define a uh, probability density function. So, okay. uh, so, it may be a continuous random variable, so in short we are writing it CRV and we had already seen that there is a unified approach of describing uh, both kind of random variable that we call it cumulative distribution function. So, why not we go for, so it is not uh, if you, you are taking uh, in continuous random variable as a derived distribution then uh, in continuous random variable you are coming with derived distribution of continuous random variable why not we go for unified approach that we call it cumulative distribution function CF. So, uh, C uh, sorry f of x cdf we call it f of x that means it is talking about probability up to x 
it is defined as probability up to x later if you see the nature of the corresponding uh, uh, random variable then it will take different different form it may it will be a summation when you are dealing with uh, discrete random variable and it will take the form of integration when you are dealing with uh, continuous random variable that we had already seen that but up to this definition we see that the, it is valid for both continuous and discrete as well so if you are willing to compute uh, uh, derived distribution that means distribution of y better you proceed with uh, the cdf of y here i should write it here uh, cdf of y okay. CDF of Y that is unified approach and we will see that so Y may be discrete may be continuous depends upon that and later we will compute uh, if y is discrete, we will compute probability mass function. If y is continuous, we will compute probability density function. So, what are the approach that we will see it here? So, alternatively, CDF is uh, it can be computed in two different way. When you are talking about uh, function of continuous random variable, in the last case, function of discrete random variable, we haven't discussed CDF. That time we haven't discussed CDF. Why? There was a single approach that we will always get a function of a discrete random variable is a discrete random variable. So that uh, two con uh, confusion kind of kind of thing was not there, but here confusion is there. It why may be a discrete or may be continuous. That's why first I define CDF, then I am going to uh, compute CDF approach to uh, derive uh, derived distribution of the uh, random variable y. Okay. So approach is coming like this way first approach that uh, implicitly we are defining CDF of y uh, that uh, implicit that means there is uh, what is meaning of implicit anyone may say that what is meaning of implicit what is meaning of implicit it is some something hidden hidden we are like uh, if someone is saying y equal to f, uh, x square then we say that y is an explicit function of x square y equal to uh, x square but if you write is something like that uh, uh, like uh, y by x equal to something uh, something something will come there and there after solving it you will come to know that uh, in that form if you are writing in that form then you will say that uh, we are unable to see y as a direct function of x in that case y is definitely function of x but it is implicitly <laughs> implicitly that kind of things it is not completely visible from the expression you have to do a lot of things in order to get implicit uh, form okay so that kind of thing so here what what will happen here uh, we will come if you in the process of uh, deriving the first uh, cdf of the corresponding random derived random variable y and we see their implicit nature of uh, the cdf then what we do uh, here uh, we go for implicit derivative kind of things Okay, so what is happening that? So, if you come up with like this way, okay, now this one is first one is uh, implicit note, it is explicit, it is coming like this. Way. Explicitly it is written here. It is defined. So, we are computing uh, CDF of Y as per definition CDF of Y, it is saying that property that Y is observing value up to a small Y. And what is Y? Y is actually G of X. So, property that uh, G of X is observing value up to Y. And here, this y is fixed and g of x is mapped to y we will look for all those x which are mapped to up to y up to y it will say that we are looking for all those x uh, uh, all those x which are less than inverse image of y less than equal to y. so we are saying the probability that uh, x is uh, observing below up to inverse image of y Remember that in case of discrete equality was here, there. Okay, equality will come. Probability x equal to something. But here in CDF we ob observe that probability up to. We are saying probability up to. Probability that x is observed will up to inverse image of y. We will read it inverse image of y. If we come to know that after simplification, idea of probability major, it is just explicit function of y that we call it h of y. In that case, how will get uh, uh, if you if you are getting in this form, so in this case, how you will get a P 
PDF of Y, just differentiate this one. Differentiate this one, provided that Y is a continuous random variable. Y is here, if this Y is a continuous random variable, then you will be able to differentiate. If it is not continuous, the derivative will be replaced by difference. Do you know that? Difference is the counterpart, discrete counterpart of derivative. Discrete counterpart of derivative. If Y is a discrete random variable, then you have to take difference approach. And if it is a continuous random, random variable and a small, uh, uh, what is sufficient uh, uh, differentiable, you have to differentiate. By differentiating the uh, this explicit nature of the CDF, so H of Y is actually CDF of Y. You differentiate it and get back the PDF of Y. Why? In the property, we have already seen that. In the definition of C, CDF, we have, we have already seen that. So how we are getting CDF for continuous random variable? By integrating the density function. What is the inverse of derivative? What is the inverse of uh, integration? Sorry. What is the? By integrating a PDF, you are getting CDF. In the definition of CDF, you had already seen that. Cumulative distribution function. What is the inverse of uh, integration? Differentiation. Derivative. What is the inverse of summation? Summation is something like integration. What is the inverse of summation? Derivative kind of thing is coming difference. Difference at two conjugative values, something like that. So difference. So that kind of thing you will see it here. So here if a y is continuous, then simply differentiate the explicit form of CDF in order to get PDF of y. That we call it this h, uh, h dash of y. We call it uh, derived distribution of y. Okay, the approach uh, two is implicit. First one is was explicit. Second one is implicit. So what we are doing, we are willing to compute CDF of y. Uh, okay, as a property that y is observing value up to a small y, and the capital Y will replaced by g of capital X. That means property that g of capital X is observing value up to X, and here up to, we are coming here that property that X is observing value up to inverse image of y, but we are not getting explicit form of this. But if you see, what does it talk about? It is talking about CDF of x, because this probability is defined in term of random variable x. So it is CDF of x, random variable x with argument, what is the argument? G inverse of, inverse image of y, inverse image of y. So this one is coming in implicit form. This one is implicitly defined. We are not getting explicit form of, definitely this would be function of y, but we are not getting implicit form due to lack of uh, uh, sub, uh, explicitly in the, uh, explicitly in the function. Okay. So how will get then uh, PDF of y? We have to differentiate uh, this function, this CDF of x with argument inverse image of y. And we are uh, differentiating with respect, what is the argument here? argument will be y so we have to differentiate with respect to y but we know that this what is what is what kind of argument this one inverse image of y is what kind of argument it is x kind of argument x kind of argument so we here we have to apply chain rule first we uh, differentiate uh, the cdf of x with respect to the corresponding argument and then we will uh, differentiate the argument inverse image of y with respect to y it is just chain rule, what we call it, chain rule, because uh, this one is what? It is function of y, inverse image of y. So depends upon, it is deriving from y, having re relation with y. So uh, if you are differentiating CDF of x with respect to x kind of ar argument, what you will get? You will get PDF, PDF of x. What is the argument? The same argue, argument with respect to what you have differentiated, that in, uh, inverse image of y. And the second component we call it, it is Jacobian factor. Jacobian factor. The, this we call it Jacobian factor or balancing factor. There is a change of variable. What variable? X has been changed to y. So that we call it, uh, in calculus again you will see that there is a change of variable kind of thing, a change of coordinate, change of variable kind of, change of coordinate in coordinate geometry you, have, you might have already seen that. So similar kind of things is coming here. So this one is Jacobian factor. This we call it Jacobian of the transformation or Jacobian of change of variable. It is coming like this way. So this is, it is coming in term of uh, implicit thing. Okay. Now we are taking examples. Any question till now? 
no question okay fine then we will take a uniform random variable which is uniformly distributed in the interval close interval 0 to 1 okay this one it is having complete description and so we can say that the pdf would be equal to 1 when x is observing value between 0 to 1 and it is taking value 0 when x is observing value outside the inter interval 0 1 okay now we are defining y as a function of x that we call it a square root of x y equal to a square root of x and now question has been raised that compute the derived pdf p, p of y that means uh, or f of y actually here if x is a continuous random variable and if you are doing a square of uh, a square root of x then what kind of value y will observe here x if x is observing value between 0 to 1 then if you are taking a square root of x what kind of value y will observe 0 to 1 again in continuous fashion it is not like the discrete fashion so y is again a continuous random variable so based on the function you will come to know so here f of y we will compute here f of y okay f of y so here a step one is just look the observed value of y under the scenario of x x we know that x is observing value between 0 and 1 and hence if you are taking a square root of that a square root of any number between 0 and 1 is again between 0 and 1 so that we can say that y is also observing value between 0 and 1 so first step is very uh, irrelevant obvious kind of things you should do but but you should do that okay then second step we will compute uh, probability the cumulative distribution function as per definition uh, f of y is defined as probability that y is observing value up to a small y and y is capital y is what a square root of x so that's why we are writing it like this way okay so just do little bit algebra here then it would be probability that x is observing value up to y square f so what would be this it is a very much explicit function we are getting it that uh, here uh, what does it talk about it is talking about cdf of x with argument y square cdf of x how it is defined as f of x equal to probability that x is observing value up to a small x what is a small x here x square y square a small x is y square so that's where it would be cdf of x with argument y square and how how we compute uh, cdf of uh, x a random variable that means we differentiate the corresponding density function from minus infinity to up to that x okay up to that so minus infinity to 0 uh, density is taking value this density of this one is taking value 0 so we will not bother about that 0 to uh, x it is taking value what is the density it is taking 1 so 1 you can write it okay so we are integrating 0 to x and x is equal to here y square so 0 to y square so integrate it what you will get y square okay so what is the derivative of y square 2y so this is the probability density function of y can you verify that is it a legitimate probability density function of y what does it mean What, what does it mean? That means uh, uh, it should satisfy being probability density function. First condition, it must be greater than or equal to 0. Second condition, uh, the integral of this one must be equal to 1. So can you verify that? So what I have What is Jacobian of y? y equal to uh, x square, no? what kind of things? 
so you will say that x inverse image of y is what a square root of a square root of y okay what is derivative of a square root of y what is derivative of a square root of y it is what is derivative of a square root of y 1 by 1 by 2 a square root of y i think this might be compatible to everyone okay are you getting so right now just to uh, uh, leave up to this okay don't focus on this uh, okay so now uh, what is the in the second approach what is the pdf of uh, y pdf of x so pdf of x time jacobian factor what is the pdf of x 1 what is the pdf of x it is uniformly distributed it is taking value between 0 and 1 how much value it is taking 1 and what is the jacobian factor 1 by square root of y so what is the pdf of y in the second form what i have discussed this it would pdf of y it would be equal to pdf of x what is this one pdf of x and what is the argument argument would be a square root of y what is the inverse image of y now what is the inverse image of y a square root under the function a square root it would be a, what i have written here y equal to a square root of many thing i am doing here a square root i have taken a second function i have a square root of y so what would be uh, x it will imply consider this one as a second example okay uh, first example as it is it, it was if you are taking y equal to uh, x square if you are taking y equal to x square then uh, if you take y equal to x square this is the situation just uh, it is for y equal to i am complicating thing here take y equal to x square it is second example call it second example example 2 if y equal to x square capital y equal to x square that means for each observation you observe this kind of situation x square then x would be what x would be what a square root of y and here if i am asking to compute uh, uh, pdf of this one would be pdf of x pdf of x is what 1 and what is the jacobian that here in, in uh, jacobian would be 1 by twice of a square root of y so this one is the density of y when you are defining function y equal to a square root of x square y equal to x square then we, then what is the pdf of y uh, 1 by uh, t, uh, Two times a square root of y. So this one is second example. You can call it. Okay. So I think I might have taken here. Uh, okay. In the second approach, we have computed uh, the uh, PDF of y equal to a square root of x. Here we are taking a square root of x. So equivalently, you can write it. x equal to y square x equal to y square so observation wise you can go and the pdf of y it is twice of y in the first example the second approach we have gone for that now another question we are taking that and second question i have taken y equal to x square root of x uh, uh, sorry y equal to x square y equal to x square you can go for this one is the first uh, function y equal to square root of x and the second function is y equal to uh, x square you can go to compute uh, probability density function of x uh, square as well what is the probability density function of x just we had seen it is f of y
in the similar approach it would be uh, 1 by uh, twice of a square root of y. So, Jacobian factor is giving contributing in density this is the is it clear to second example is clear or, or not first is very easy second is clear or not second we are going for second approach due to implicit nature. So, uh, the density of y it is 1 by a square twice of a square root of y. Now, second question I am taking John is driving from Boston to New York area a distance of 180 miles and his average speed is uniformly distributed in the interval uh, 30 to 60 miles per hour. So, a speed is given miles per hour. So, you have to find what is the PDF of duration of the trip you have to find. So, what is the relation between uh, a speed and duration? A speed is distance by time. The duration would be duration that we denoted by y and x we de denoted by uh, denote x denote a speed. So, y would be 180 by x. We need to compute the distribution of the duration y. Okay. So, as per approach we will find the PDF of y, the CDF of y first computing CDF here f of y is actually defined as probability that y is observing value up to small y and what is y? y is 180 by x. So, we will replace probability that 180 by x is less than equal to it is observing value up to small y and it is just an inequality solve it. How you will write it? Probability that x is if you take this side then x is probability that x is greater than or equal to 180 by y. So, what kind of probability? This one is tail probability. If you do uh, partition of this one, name of this point is what we call it uh, uh, 180 by y 180 by y. Okay. This point we are calling it 180 by y. So, what, what is name of this one in term of x? This, in this side x is less than equal to 180 by y ok and what what about right side right side will say that x is greater than greater than equal to 180 by it is a dichotomy principle what we call it it has cut uh, this number into two part and what further you will say that if you talking about if you are talking about this event and this event what are the relation between these two event these two events are complement to each other do you see any common thing between these two no these two are complement if this one is happening this one is not happening these are mutually disjoint or complement simply I would like to say that. So, how you compute probability of complement 1 minus. So, that is where I have taken here uh, probability that x is object value greater than equal to uh, 180 by y it is equal to 1 minus probability that x is object value less than equal to 180 by y. I think this derivation might be clear to everyone. Okay. And what does it talk about? It is talking about CDF of x x is less than equal to this call it uh, a small x ok 180 by y call it a small x. So, 1 minus pro probability that x is value up to a small x that means it is actually talking about CDF of random variable x with argument 180 by y ok. So, this one is CDF of what is the CDF of x it is uniformly distributed random variable what is CDF of x x is object value between three, uh, 30 to 60 in uniform fashion. Then what would be PDF? What would be PDF? Uniform PDF? If we, x is object value between 30 to 60, what is the PDF? 1 by 30 when x is object value between uh, 30 to 60. That means 1 by 30 why? 60 minus 30 is what? 30. So, 1 by 30. So, here PDF it is having PDF. Uh, you will simply say that PDF of x I am saying that it is taking value 1 by 30 
1 by b minus a that formula you might have already seen so 1 by b minus a 60 minus 30 is 30 when x is taking value from this interval otherwise it is taking 0 pdf is 0 so that's why same formula we will apply it here uh, uh, based on the or otherwise we will go for jacobian approach if you are getting explicit form of this one then fine otherwise we will uh, go to find uh, what is the value of this one? What is the value of this? That means CDF, if we are computing explicitly from uh, the PDF, what is the value of this one? That means you are integrating the PDF of x from minus infinity to up to x. And x is e here equal to 180 by y. And from minus infinity to 0, density is taking value 0. So that means it is talking about integration of 1 from 0 to 180 by y. What is the integration of 0 to 180 by y? It is 180 by y. What would be 0? Integration of uh, 0 to x, uh, what is the integration of 1? What is the integration? It is just x now. So the same thing here. So explicitly also you can get it. And both formula would be same. It is explicit and implicit both here. So here the CDF of y you are getting it 1, 1 minus 180 by y. This one is explicit function of y. Otherwise you compute uh, PDF of y in implicit form that means differentiate uh, CDF of y with respect to y then you apply chain rule and the first component will come as uh, CDF, PDF of x with argument 180 by y and then 180 by y you have to differentiate by y. So what is the PDF of x? It is 1 by 30. So that we have written it. 1 by 30. That one is a uniform. And what is the derivative of 180 by y? It is 180 by y square. And my here modulus we have taken density is never negative quantity. It is always positive quantity. That's why modulus we have taken. So it would be 180 by y square and simplify it what you will get 6 by y square so this is the pdf of duration y and someone is willing to compute uh, density uh, from this explicit form what is the derivative of this okay sorry here 30 will also here now when you are integrating one then density you are integrating density 1 by 30 you are not integrating uh, 1, you are integrating 1 by 30. Here density is 1 by 30, no? So 30 will also come in the denominator. So 180 by 30y. Okay. Here density is not 1. The density is 1 by 30. Normalizing factor is there. So what is the derivative of this one? What is the derivative? Further you simplify it. It is just uh, 6 in the numerator. And what is the derivative? 1 minus 6 by y. It is just 6 by y square. So both in implicit computation of density and explicit form, both are matching, both are same. That is the density of duration. I think uh, it would be clear to everyone. Now, if you talk about gamma function, there is gamma distribution, generalized from gamma function. A gamma distribution is actually uh, again coming from derived distribution. How it is coming, I will talk about. First, let us discuss about form of the uh, gamma distribution. So gamma distribution is actually, if you talk about gamma function, how does it define? It is defined as an integral of e to the power minus t, t to the power alpha minus 1 from 0 to infinity. And if you talk about gamma function, gamma function is generalization of factorial. Have you heard factorial? factorial of 2, factorial of 3. So generally you are computing factorial of positive integers. Okay. But if you replace uh, the integer by a real number, what kind of thing that would be? That would be gamma function. Actually, if you in the gamma function, if you replace alpha by natural number, it becomes factorial. This one is a very famous integral defined by uh, Euler. Uh, and uh, this we call it gamma function. It is integral from 0 to infinity to the power minus t, t to the power alpha minus uh, 1 with respect to, you are integrating with respect to t. So here t is a dummy variable, whatever thing you can go for that. And what kind of form here uh, in integrant is taking? Same 
take here e to the power minus lambda time x x to the power alpha minus 1 ok and here lambda to the power alpha divided by uh, gamma function of alpha ok these are normalizing constant this we call it gamma distribution it is a legitimate probability density function ok when x is observing value greater than equal to 0 because the gamma function is defined for positive uh, x greater t is greater than 0 ok and when x is less than 0 the gamma distribution is taking value 0 ok and it actually this gamma distribution is generalized from uh, geometric distribution or exponential distribution this exponential geometric both are having uh, very inter continuous counterpart of geometric is exponential exponential uh, random variable we have discussed so uh, we haven't computed as mean and variance of uh, that uh, uh, exponential random variable that one is also coming in term of lambda simply in term of lambda it is coming so likewise that will be generalized the, the expectation of this gamma random variable it would be alpha by uh, lambda and variance would be alpha by lambda square this computation is very simple just if you go for this one not simply simply uh, you have to do little bit exercise here in integration and th there are the various possibility of uh, uh, the gamma distribution for different different uh, value of uh, lambda and gamma there are two parameter lambda and gamma with respect to, to different different value of lambda gamma you will get different different uh, plot of pdf pdf of x this gamma random variable and how it is coming that if you are taking alpha equal to 1 if you are fixing alpha equal to 1 a lambda as it is then what is the uh, uh, this gamma function actually if you talk about uh, if you take alpha equal to n then alpha equal to n then what would be gamma function of uh, n it would be equal to factorial n minus 1 that relation you observe between gamma function and factorial gamma function of natural number n must be a natural number n must be if you are taking n uh, integer then what is the factorial of negative number 0 so that would be 0 so we are not worrying about that we are just going for uh, some positive contribute contribution so here if you are taking uh, gamma equal to 1 it would be factorial of 0 what is the factorial of 0 factorial of 0 is 1 so in denominator we will have uh, 1 and numerator we will have lambda to the power 1 so that means lambda and exponential of here what would be alpha minus uh, 1 it would be alpha equal to 1 so alpha 1 minus 1 is 0 so x to the power 0 is what 1 x to the power 0 is 1 so this term will vanish only we will have uh, lambda into e to the power minus lambda what distribution it is talking about lambda into e to the power minus lambda time x that one is actually your exponential distribution so if alpha equal to 1 it is talking about exponential distribution so you can say that gamma distribution is generalized from exponential distribution it is generalized from exponential distribution okay now if you take uh, alpha equal to n by 2 and gamma equal to 1 by 2 okay then you are getting this kind of notation okay so the gamma distribution uh, actually it is reduced to this we call it actually chi square distribution chi square distribution and chi square distribution is generated from normal distribution later we will see if you time permit so what is normal uh, uh, chi square distribution take normal distribution various form of normal distribution like first normal distribution z1 a square root of we had already seen that if x is a x is a random variable then x square is also a random variable and x and x square both are having different different probability density function probability distribution it is not a, not like that uh, x and x square both are having the same distribution different distribution both are having different distribution so likewise if z is a normal a standard normal random variable then z square is also a random variable but that one is not having distribution of normal distribution that one is not uh, not having normal distribution it is having different distribution what is that distribution that we call it chi square distribution because a square term is coming a square term, term is coming so chi square distribution the if you take uh, another and normal a standard normal random variable uh, z2 and you do a square then 
z1 square plus z2 square this one is also a chi square distribution here it is having uh, two terms first we had only one term z square okay here we are having two terms likewise you can go and keep on increasing keep on increasing n that we are calling it chi square distribution uh, that came from n number of uh, normal random variable by squaring and summing okay so that one is the degree of freedom what you call it it is having we have taken single uh, normal random variable it is having single degree of freedom we have taken two uh, normal random variable it is having two degree of freedom okay so second n is coming with respect to that the alpha this n is coming with respect to how much n you are taking n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 like that okay so that so the, simply you can say that uh, this one is a derived distribution of a standard normal random variable are you getting meaning of this or not you have already seen normal random variable and if you are taking mean equal to 0 and variance equal to 1 then you call that normal normal random variable uh, a standard normal random variable and if you uh, define function of that aspect a standard normal random variable through a squaring then you are getting chi square distribution actually chi square distribution is a special case of gamma distribution a special case of gamma so gamma distribution is what it is a family of distribution and uh, for different different value of gamma and lambda it is describing different different distribution so it is one kind of family kind of things like family of conic section you might have already seen that second uh, second degree kind of equations you might have already seen so that will for different different of uh, things you will get sometime hyperbola sometime parabola sometime uh, ellipse based on nature of parameter what you are getting abc what you have taken based on the nature of the that discriminant you are computing based on that you are getting different different conic section similarly here for alpha for different different of alpha and gamma you will get different different distribution so it is one kind of collection of distribution it is talking about uh, and those collection of distribution you are getting through a derived distribution of the existing uh, continuous random variable okay now further if you are taking alpha equal to n the gamma distribution uh, reduced to enlarged pdf with n degree of freedom so enlarged pdf it is coming like this way you can call it it is sum of n exponential random variable exponential random variable we had already seen that the first one is the exponential random variable this is the ex lambda into e to the power minus lambda exponential random variable means it is talking about exponential decay time modeling of exponential decay time okay and if you are summing there are various bulb each bulb is having different different uh, decay time another bulb is having different decay time like different the various bulbs are there if i am asking to compute decay time of all the bulbs in this room what you have to do you have to sum the decay time for all the bulbs the sum of the decay time what kind of probability density it will have that we call it enlarge enlarge probability density function it is coming from again gamma distribution for a specific alpha equal to n you are taking then you are getting enlarge probability density function so you can say that it is very important that it is talking about unifi unification of all possible continuous random variable and function of continuous random variable okay fine then next we will talk about beta distribution S see that how much Euler has contributed in this all in all these uh, things Euler, i think uh, he lost his eyes during his uh, older time and despite of that he come up with various mathematical result working in russia somewhere in russia okay so he was a great mathematician so beta function uh, actually beta distribution is coming from the beta function what is the beta function actually beta function is defined from 0 to integral actually interval from 0 to 1 actually it is defined from it is 0 to 1 integral from 0 to 1 okay gamma is actually it is fine gamma is defined from 0 to infinity it is fine so gamma is fine there is no any issue now we come with beta function what is the beta function we are integrating t to the power alpha minus 1 1 minus t to the power beta minus 1 from 0 to 1 at this we call it beta function 
beta function is having two argue parameter alpha and beta okay and uh, if you break the beta function it is having association with gamma function how uh, it is actually ratio of gamma function of alpha product of gamma function of alpha and gamma function of beta divided by gamma function of alpha plus beta this relation these are very a special kind of function i will not ask any question to derive all these okay uh, if you are interested you can go to find uh, in uh, calculus some some kind of calculus book you will find all these derivation but i am not interested i am just taking in probability this one taking in probability the same form if you are willing to see in the distribution probability distribution that x to the power alpha minus 1 into 1 minus beta to the power uh, 1 minus x to the power beta minus 1 okay and here we are taking uh, the normalizing coefficient it is coming in term of beta function what kind of uh, this one is what is 1 by beta function if you take reciprocal of this one the denominator will come in numerator so this one is 1 it is actually reciprocal of beta function 1 by beta function 1 by beta function you can call it this one is so if you are uh, writing uh, the distribution function in term of beta function in, in term of beta function somewhat association with beta function then the corresponding distribution we call it a beta distribution so all these are actually unification kind of things what we call it very a special kind of distribution what we call it all these we are, we are getting it from the derived distribution derived distribution and uh, all these are having very a specific form in the last case i had told that uh, actually we haven't computed uh, expectation of uh, exponential random variable if you compute expectation of expected uh, uh, exponential random variable it is coming as uh, 1 by lambda that computation is very easy that one is dealing with exponential integration of exponential function and simply if i ask which function is having the simplest uh, integral approach exponential function <coughs> exponential function is having simplest integral form so easily you can get uh, uh, the expectation of exponential random variable is, it is 1 by lambda and what is the variance that uh, x squared into exponential function will come then you have to go for islet formula that uh, what we call it uh, islet uh, uh, sorry uh, you have to actually better approach is uh, the integration that what, what we call it if you have if you are having product of uh, a function is product uh, product of two function how you integrate it what is the formula if you are having product of function how you integrate integration by parts do you know integration by parts do you know or not so you go for integration by parts so there uh, in order to compute uh, variance of uh, exponential random variable then go for integration by parts and compute also in, in computation variance expectation of x you have to go for integration by parts and compute uh, expectation and variance so expectation if you are taking x is here exponentially distributed exponentially distributed apply integration by parts get the expectation of uh, exponential random variable okay that would be uh, that one is very simple kind of integration it is not a complicated one Aspect, expectation would be 1 by lambda and uh, variance would be 1 by lambda square due to x square term uh, there you will see in integration by parts in the so variance is 1 by lambda square so <coughs> in the uh, gamma distribution we had already seen that uh, if you are willing to compute uh, expectation of gamma distribution uh, random variable it would be alpha by lambda and variance would be alpha by lambda square very simple it is just uh, derived from uh, that uh, exponential number variable and uh, further if you talk about uh, expectation of uh, uh, this one here uh, the beta distribution beta random variable with this distribution 
then you can say that x is a beta random variable having relation that x1 divided by x1 plus x2. What is x1? x1 is actually gamma random variable. x2 is another gamma random variable. A gamma random variable with parameter alpha and lambda equal to 1. And x2 is gamma random variable with uh, in place of alpha we are taking beta and gamma lambda equal to 1. In the gamma there are two parameters, one is alpha and one other is lambda. If I am taking alpha equal to 1 in the gamma distribution, what does that becomes? That becomes exponential random variable. Are you able to recall the last example? If you are taking alpha equal to 1 in the gamma distribution, the gamma distribution becomes exponential distribution. But if you are taking in place of uh, lambda equal to 1, it would be not a exponential distribution, just we call it gamma distribution. Alpha equal to alpha, lambda equal to 1. Alpha equal to beta, lambda equal to 1. So, these are the gamma distribution. If you are coming with two gamma distribution and you define this kind of fraction x1 divided by x1 plus x2, then this will have beta distribution. This will have a beta distribution. Okay. And why I am writing this one in term of uh, gamma distribution? Because uh, it is very easy to compute expectation of gamma distribution or gamma random expectation of gamma. Expectation of gamma is alpha by uh, lambda variance is alpha by lambda square. The same process you will apply here lambda lambda will cancel out. We will have expectation of x alpha by alpha plus beta. And what is the variance? Alpha into beta divided by alpha plus beta whole square into alpha plus beta plus 1. So, that is way actually I term beta random variable in term of gamma random variable. And these are the a special kind of uh, unification of random variables and uh, uh, it is very hard to compute directly if you are going for uh, computation or expectation or variance. Always go for a special kind of integration. So, there are two kind of a special integration. One is gamma integration and another one is beta integration, beta, okay, beta kind of thing. So, those kind of things is helping to get all these. Okay. The plot you can see that various plot for various pair of alpha and beta you will you will get this sort of uh, gamma uh, distribution. And here keep on changing. So, this one is animated form. What form this week? What this one is actually it may be JPG, it may be PNG, it may be any kind of image form. What we call this one? What form this one which is changing with respect to a change of variable, change of parameter? What we call GIF. Have you heard GIF format? It is one kind of animated figure. This one is animated figure GIF you can. So, it is aggregation of, of all these. Okay. You keep on changing the value of alpha and beta. So, it is GIF form. So, it is not like that is very all these are very simple things. Okay. And these are the corresponding uh, CDF of the gamma distribution, CDF of gamma distribution. Okay. Any question till now? Uh, these look very special. Definitely these are little bit complicated, I accept it. But you, I, I won't ask regarding derivation of that. Uh, you go with uh, some kind of relation with the existing technique some kind of relation you come up with that what we have already discussed. So, now expected value of expected value rule we will talk about expected value rule we have already discussed about expectation. So, now we are having a derived distribution that means we are having a random variable x and then we are defining function of x and we are calling that the function of x y. Okay. If you are willing to compute uh, expectation of y then as per definition of expectation, we will say that it is weighted integral of y. The weight is provided by the corresponding probability mark density function of y. But we are not interested in that. Through this uh, here change of order of integration, if you play here, uh, it will be just turn into integral of uh, g of x and the weight is provided by density of x. g of x and density. Here p of I, uh, density of y is not coming here. This we call it expected value rule. The integral is again from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. This we call it expected value rule. Just the summation has been replaced by integration. 
So this we call it expected value rule. Okay, through expected value rule we will compute uh, expectation of y. So here uh, uh, there are two way of computing uh, expectation of y. The first one is as per definition, weighted integral of y. The weight is provided by prob probability density function of y. Okay. The second one is uh, expected value rule. That means here weighted integral of g of x. Y is a function of x. G of x. We will not write y explicitly. We will write y as a function of x. G of x, weighted integral of g of x, weight is provided by density of x. We never bother about computing distribution of y. That's why here this we call it expected value rule. Integral from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, if you are having function of a random variable. So we will compute few example. If I am taking a uniform random variable uh, which is defined over the interval 0, 1 and define y equal to g of x. And here y is taking value 1 when x is observing between 0 to 1 by 3. And y is taking value 2 when x is observing value between 1 by 3 to 1. So tell me y is what kind of random variable? Is it discrete or continuous? What kind of random variable y? It is a discrete. It is just observing just two value. Either 1 or 2. So y is a discrete random variable. But x is a continuous random variable. So in order to compute expectation of y, what kind of distribution y will have? Probability mass function it will have. So compute the probability mass function of y. That will, it will have two value, y is observing just two value, either one or two. So probability mass function at uh, one, it is that probability that y is observing value, y, one, y is observing value one. What does it mean? y equal to one is equivalent to say that x is observing value up to one by three. When y is observing value one, when x is observing value up to one by three. So that's where this probability measure is equal to this probability measure. That probability that x is observing value up to 1 by 3. And x is uniformly distributed in the interval 0 to 1. Then this one is talking about CDF of x at value 1 by 3. What is the CDF of x? If you That means you are integrating uh, 1 from uh, 0 to x. Integration of 1 from 0 to x is what? x. So that's where here it would be 1 by 3. So, this 1 by 3 is the probability of observing y equal to 1. Likewise, 2 by 3 would be probability of observing y equal to 2. Okay. And also we can say that 1 and 2 are complement to each other. Also you can say that. Or mutually exclusive. You can say. Now, if you are willing to compute expectation of y, what would be? Uh, y is observing 2 value. 1 with probability 1 by 3. So, and 2 with probability 2 by 3. So just sum these two uh, product, you will get expectation of y. So this way of computation, y is, it may look simple. Okay. There you have done extra computation. What you have computed, probability mass function of y. In the second approach, the expected value rule, we will not go for that. We will not compute probability mass function of y. What you do? Just see the nature of g of x. See the nature of y. Y is changing two times, two it taking 0 to 1 by 3 it is taking 1 and 1 by 3 to 1 it is taking 2. So that's why x will be bifurcated, this integral will be bifurcated into two parts, 0 to 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 to 1. Uh, 0 to 1 by 3 y is taking, g of x is equal to 1 and 1 by 3 to 1 g of x equal to 2. So that's why we are writing it like this way and integrate this, you will get the same expectation. So which one you find easy, the first or second? Which one you find easy? As per competition, simplicity you will say that first one is easy. But if you talk about number of competition, which one is easy? The second one is easy. So if you are in uh, technical institute, you will talk about number of competition. How many, comp how many times you are competing, you will talk about. Computational uh, complexity you will talk about. The second approach is much faster. Okay, so you will go for second. So, actually, uh, we don't have much time. In next class, we will discuss about uh, few more things.